Hello everybody, are you ready to learn about GraphQL? I surely am. But before we get started using GraphQL with Contentful, we have to set up our content model and actually create some content. So what I did is I created a new empty space here, and we can now define the content structures, the so-called content models, to get started. So what I click is I do, I click create new content type, and I say that I want to have a new content type of type person. So what I can now do is there are no fields on it yet, I can add a new field and I, we, you see that we have several field types available and I go for a text field. And I just want to have the person to have a name. And with this, we just set up our first data structure here. So I can now save this and then when I go to content, I can create my first person entry. So let's add person here and I will give it my name here. So let's hit publish. And now we're ready to query this data using GraphQL. So let's head over to the documentation in our developer docs. So it's at developer docs references GraphQL. And you will see here that the GraphQL endpoint is available at graphql.contentful.com. You can define the space that you want to query. And if you use environments, you can also query several environments, which is very nice for development workflows to have content running in a CI CD pipeline if possible. The thing that I want to show you though is graphical. And we ship GraphQL in the GraphQL endpoint itself. So what you see here is when we go here to graphical, you see to the documentation of graphical, you see that you can explore the schema um, when you go to this URL here. So what we can do is we can open a new tab, we can go there. And here we now see that actually we're not allowed to query the data. And the reason for that is that we didn't define the space and the CDA token. So let's fetch these. We can go into back into Contentful. We can go to settings, API keys, and there's already an example key waiting for you to use. So we grab the space ID. I update the URL here and I paste that one. And then there's the CDA, the content delivery API access token. This is an access token that allows you access to the data that is published. We will learn about the other token, which is the preview token uh, in a later episode. So when we now go back to graphical and we paste the token here, we can update this and we see the graphical interface. And the cool thing about graphical is that it comes with this doc section. This allows you to explore the GraphQL endpoint that you're using. So when we now go here, we see that we have a query object available and this query object has several fields. So you can query assets if you want to, you can query the person that we just created, or you can query several persons in a person collection. So let's query this person. And this field defines that it allows several arguments. So it allows an ID, a preview, and a locale. And the tricky part here is that this explanation point says that the ID is required to use this. But let's just write our first query and see how this actually works. So we can go here, we can define query. And you already see here that there's some pretty nice auto completion. The pro tip is to just go into it and press control space which then shows you what is available. So we can go in here and we can say person, and it tells me that we maybe want to need query an ID. And now we have to specify the ID of this entry. So let's go back to Contentful. Let's go to the content area here. And here we have the ID available in the URL, or you can also fetch it from here if you want to. And what we can do here now is we can paste that. And with this, we can use the field. We can open another pair of curlies and well, GraphQL is still, or Graphical is still not happy with it. The reason for that is that we didn't define what we want to query. So let's just hit Control Space. And you see here that our name is available already. So with this, we now have a valid GraphQL query and we can press play. And that's it. Let's just make sure that this is actually true. So let's update this one. So let's say Stefan updated. Let's go here. Let's publish this again and let's hit it again. Nice. So this is all it takes to query your first data. But let's have a look at this other field, this person collection. So let's just figure out how this works by tabbing around in the interface. So we can go there and say person collection. And you see that it has several arguments, but none of these is required. So we can just open the curly brackets and then let's find out what is in there. It shows that we can uh, see the total number that we can define to skip some things, some limits, and there's an items field. So let's have a look at what this actually entails. So we see here that it's items and that is a collection of persons. So we can go into this and we can say items 
and I open another curlies and we can see and here we now have the same data available as in the other query but we are now using a collection endpoint. So let's fire this one up and we see the same data now here. So what you see here already is that we make two different kind of requests or requests for resources in a single API call. But why should I use a person collection endpoint after all? Let's play around a little bit with, with the arguments of the person collection here. So you see there that there is this where um, argument available. So let's see what we can do here. This is of the type person filter. And you see here that there are several filters available depending on the fields of the certain resource. So what we can do now is we can say where, and then we see if there's auto completion available. Let's see. All right. And we want to filter only uh, for entries that, let's say, contain my name. Let's fire that one up. All right. Still works. What happens when we now do this? We get an empty collection, which is expected. So what is cool about this now is that we can also chain certain filters here. So what we can do is we can, for example, do end. And this now accepts a collection here of several filters. So we can grab this one here and do this. So this now should do exactly the same. Nice. It gives me back my result. But we can now chain certain filters. So let's just adjust the content model. We go here and I go back to the person and let's add, for example, my age here. I can create that one. I hit save. And when I now go to the content, I can enter my age. Here we go. 34. And what we can now do is we can save this query. We can do a refresh because now the GraphQL endpoint is updated or graphical is updated with the data that is available. And what we can do now is we can chain these kind of things. So we can now say we want to have a person collection with the entries or items that contain the name Stefan. And let's see, have the age of 34. So let's run this. Looks good. And let's change this. All right, seems to work. So there are other things available in our GraphQL API, which is, for example, assets. Um, if you upload media, you can query this one too. So we can now have a quick look and I'm querying away, doing items. Let's see what is in there. Sys. Sys is a field for our meta properties. And for example, we could grab the ID of certain things. So when we fire this one now up, I press command um, enter. You see that we haven't uploaded any assets yet, but we will do that in the future episodes. So this was a really quick one about graphical. And I hope you understood that this tool gives you as a developer the, the freedom and the possibilities to just see what is available in a GraphQL endpoint. And then you can build the queries to use the data you want in your application. And we'll start building something in the next episode.